Welcome to the Geek Home World Podcast. I'm your host, Ed, a.k.a. The Savage Tech Man. We talk film, TV, and tech, all from a geek perspective. You can find us on X, Instagram, Facebook, and you can subscribe and follow on YouTube at Geek Home World. Don't forget to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Be a part of the Geek Home World. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode, a live stream, in fact, of another episode of the Geek Home World Podcast. I'm your host, Ed Sisovich, and we're here on a Saturday night, March 16th. Should have worn my uh, green, my uh, St. Patrick's Day stuff. Uh, A lot of family and friends are celebrating St. Patrick's Day in my hometown. I I wasn't able to go down this year. Too much homework and stuff to do. other responsibilities to take care of but i'm here with you guys um here um on a saturday night and um i wanted to do a live stream i was hoping to get a digital digital caveman from digital caveman presents but we had some scheduling conflicts and he's doing some family stuff so he wasn't able to make it um the title of this episode is episode 169 uh live stream To me, my X-Men, which is, if you are psyched up like I am, um, for X-Men 97, we're going to talk about that. That's going to be the main focus of this podcast episode. Um, We are in the live stream here um, on YouTube. Uh, It's Geek Home World at at Geek Home World 4248. Uh, We're up to about 51 subs, and I want to thank our new subs and... And as it is, you know, you get all these subs and then no one shows up for a live stream. It's weird. Um, I did actually schedule this one and then um, I do apologize. I'm about 30 minutes behind myself, so I didn't show up on time. So strike two, (laughs) you know, on my part. But it's, you know, it's neither here nor there. And people don't always watch stuff live. They come back and watch it later. That's the nature of podcasts. And uh, but um, I'm not sure how long I'm going to stream tonight, uh, but I did want to talk about x-men the animated series which for me has always been the high water mark for x-men long before disney had even thought about acquiring x-men or fox or whatever they the x-men did exist and and they did a fantastic job yeah you know some of it holds up some of it doesn't um it definitely x-men The animated series ran from 92 to 96. So, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96. Yeah, it was what, five, six years, whatever. And 92 to 96. And um, it was... I I really enjoyed it. It was a fresh take on the X-Men. It was probably one of the most... It was during the height of of X-Men and comics at the time. Um, During that period of time and and i have to check my stats on this but i know um i was collecting comic books in the 90s and um hadn't really collected them since i was a kid but i got into it then and then this series uh really pulled me in to the whole uh collecting of comics and all that so that was pretty cool and um so i thoroughly enjoyed uh being an x-man X-Men fan has always been one of my um, favorite comic books that, you know, I've um, had the privilege to uh, collect and all that. And uh, so I just really was um, excited and spurred on by this uh, series, the animated series. And, um, of course, we're getting X-Men 97, which comes out in four days it's already actually premiered a couple of episodes two or three episodes and they're very good reviews on them of course we know if you've been following it like i have um the head writer creator of x-men 97 was abruptly fired uh by marvel right before the premiere and um you know there's been a backlash and there may still be a backlash because you know Disney can't seem to take material how it was and continue it, especially since this show is a continuation. It's literally picking up the next day after the series ended. 
with Xavier um, being taken away by Lalandra um, with the Shi'ar so they could heal his, you know, the attack that was made on him. And, and I guess the world presumes he's dead. And maybe that's the narrative they're going with because they don't know when and if he'll ever return to Earth. Uh, he does eventually, um, from what I'm hearing. But anyway, so the um, series talks about that. And um, sounds like um, Wolverine or Cy Cyclops' motorcycle just went by, if you heard that in the background. Um, but uh, eventually they get the... Um, you know, eventually Xavier comes back. And, uh, but what I was saying is that with the series, it seems like that, um, they're supposed to be picking up uh, almost like right after those events and graduation day, which was the, then the series finale. So this is, that's why it's X-Men 97, because in 1997, this would have been the next series of it. And uh, production wise, Losing the head writer can be very problematic. He, I think they had already, they may have completed the second season. If not, they definitely have all the storyboards and, and all the story laid down. And he was actually shopping around ideas with the writers and create other creators of X-Men 97 for the third season, which I'm excited about. Now, the big controversy before that was Disney going woke, like they tend to do, and they finally kind of, I think turning a corner on that, realizing that, you know, through a lot of their based upon previous films and and well all the TV shows, they're they're not pulling in the kind of bank that Marvel used to be. I mean, Marvel has almost painted themselves into a corner that in a tailspin that I believe they're gonna come out of, but it's most studios couldn't, but uh, they may be able to do that, assuming they make the right choices in story. And it all comes back to story. It doesn't matter about your spectacle and everything else. Um, it's about the story of it all. And um, so X-Men 97, I'm reserving all kinds of judgment. I'm hearing a lot of negative things beforehand, but I'm hearing people that actually watched it. And from every trailer I've seen, I'm super stoked and excited for X-Men 97. It's something I've been wanting since 1996. I never wanted it to end. I was enjoying this series, even though that last season they had changed the animation. And so the animation looked a little wonky. Even though now, if you look in retrospect, it's not as wonky. Maybe it is. Some people say it is. Some people say it isn't. But compared to like animation styles of today and 2024 when we're getting X-Men 97, it seems as if the um, first, what, five seasons, that animation doesn't hold up as well. It's kind of clunky looking, but it was of its time. And I don't know if it was cutting edge at the time, but it was it was good animation. And, um, you know, but I like the spirit of the, the team, the story they got right. They're making some changes possibly, you know, they the whole... With X -Men, X Men 97, the whole controversy about Morph being non binary. Well, you know, those weren't, if we're putting this in the time frame of 1997, that wasn't something that was even talked about then. Even if, you know, of all characters, if you had to make someone non binary, having a shapeshifter to me makes perfect sense. Because you'd shift into females you shift into males so this male character who's non-binary it would work um there's been obviously some revisions on how women were drawn especially rogue she's not as um well built <laughs> i don't know how else to say it um she's more endowed in the original x-men animated series um episodes the first six seasons and uh, she looks different. She looks incredibly smaller in a lot of areas. <laughs> um, I don't know how to say that and, and see, still seem appropriate, but you you know what I'm talking about if you've been following it, and you'll notice the difference if you know. But um, 
that's not a deal breaker. None of this is a deal breaker for me. I'm going to watch it regardless. I'm not going to say, oh, I'm not going to watch it because Disney has gone woke again and, and messed something else up. I, I like to give everything a chance, even though it, it seems like, you know, we get a preview or a first episode or two and it's so promising, like a lot of the Disney Plus shows, and it invariably we're let down. Uh, there's only been a few series that I haven't felt that way about on Disney Plus, but I've watched pretty much all of them. Um, um, Absolute Terrible is um, She-Hulk. It's probably the worst. Um, for me, Echo, terrible. I I know people that like it. Just wasn't for me. I binged it. Did not care for it. Uh, no basis for her powers, blah, blah, blah. You know, I could go in particulars, but I'm, I'm not going to. Um, and I know people that have worked on some of these shows that I talk about. And, uh, but my personal opinion is, you know, what we're talking about here and well, whoever else comes on the show and wants to voice their opinions are welcome, but it just was not for me. And, um, I wasn't a big fan of Hawkeye. Um, I did think, um, right out of the gate, I didn't like the first two episodes, but in hindsight I did, of WandaVision. I thought WandaVision is still the best Disney Plus series that was ever done. Very close would be Moon Knight for me. Now, some people dislike Moonlight. I didn't. I thought Oscar Isaac gave such a great performance in that character as essentially two to almost three characters, if you know the story of Moon Knight. And I knew nothing of Moon Knight going in. Maybe that makes a bit of a difference. Um, I didn't know much about She-Hulk going in. I didn't know of the comics and the fourth wall. And I didn't really have a problem with that. But just the way that show was so poorly written in because of overscheduling people and working them to death, um, as as we've heard reports of with She-Hawk, the animators and all that, uh, and special effects or whatever, it just looked really bad. Some of that um, special effects was not top part, certainly not Marvel's best. And the storyline was so incredibly woke that it was almost like anti-male, and I didn't... <laughs> I'm not the demographic for that. Maybe some people liked it, but... Actually, a lot of people didn't. But anyway, um, some other Disney Plus uh, series that, that I did like, I think Ahsoka was one of the best. And, you know, I've got a little mixed feelings about a few things in there, maybe how it ended. It's basically, it was just kind of a circle. They just kind of sw swapped places, Thrawn and, and Ezra and and all that. So, But I still liked it. I loved the Hayden Christensen stuff. Um, Obi-Wan. I enjoyed it more than most people did. We were hoping to get something more, something different. It shouldn't have focused on Leia, even though the, the young actress that played Leia, she did a... She was very, very good actress. And, you know, but, you know, like the chase scenes when the guy, two guys are chasing her and the, or two or three guys are chasing her and they, you know, this little eight-year-old or whatever, you, you can't catch her. It's ridiculous. So, you know, a lot of that's, you know, some bad storylines, but... You know, I wish it would have focused more on Obi-Wan and Luke Skywalker. We get Luke Skywalker in the end. And if you hadn't seen it, I just spoiled it for you, but you should have watched it at this point. So, um, but all in all, I liked seeing Hayden Christensen back and getting the love he deserves. Um, the gentleman in the, Ahmad, I think is his first name, uh, the actor that played Jar Jar Binks. You know, he was, of course, in the prosthetics and stuff for episode one and part of episode two when Jar Jar Binks was in there um, of, of, you know, of the prequels, episode one and episode two, uh, Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones. It was nice to see him become a Jedi. They made him a Jedi and, um, and, and, um, you know, to see him in, you know, in live action was pretty good. It felt like a bit of, a, not retribution, but, um, I can't think of the word, but it felt very, very good and very justified to see him get that kind of respect um, for, you know, playing the roles that he did. And um, so it, it was really nice to um, for him to get that, you know, nod and, you know, like to see some of the, the love uh, from the fans. Uh, another thing, and I don't know how I got on Star Wars here, but it's talking Disney Plus. Well, one last thing I saw that um, 
I was watching Star Wars Theories channel. He's probably your best Star Wars person out there. Certainly uh, dedicated to George's vision of things. He uh, recently did a video t talking, um, and I can't remember the actor's name. I, I know it, of course, and forgotten now, but um, he played the young Anakin Skywalker in episode one before Hayden Christensen played him from that point on. And uh, Jake Lloyd is his name. But, you know, there was, his mother talked about his uh, psychiatric problems that he had, issues that he's dealt with over the years. And he was never mad at Star Wars. And, and he got teased a lot for his role as Anakin and, and stuff like that. But he was kind of too young for a lot of that, to, for it to really sink in. But he had other mental issues that were far more serious and Star Wars Theory revealed a lot of this in that episode, his latest episode of his um, podcast or whatever on his YouTube channel. And um, it's very, very, very sad for Jake Lloyd. Um, hopefully he makes his mental recovery and, and hopefully he'll appear on Star Wars Theory show or, or somewhere else, you know, and tell his side of the story. I mean, people, I think the fandom is finally come around a generation or so that they have more love and respect for the actors in the prequels, especially with Disney, the way they took the Disney sequels left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth and a lot of people don't like them. I don't totally dislike them. I still like them, but not, not to the point that they were, their storyline was true to where it needed to be. And, you know, we all know how the fandom got split after Last Jedi. But anyway, we're not here to talk necessarily about that. We can talk about things. If, if you have any comments or questions, uh, anything you, you know, please leave it in the chat or whatever. If you've got a good camera and whatever, I may bring you on or, you know, into the live stream. Anything's possible. But, uh, you know, leave your comments and all that and and all that. Um, I'd ask that you uh, subscribe to Geek Home World at YouTube on YouTube. Um at Geek Home World 4248, or just go to search for Geek Home World on YouTube, you'll find us. Uh, if you like this video, please, you know, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, enable your notifications, you'll know the next time I actually announced <laughs> that there's going to be a live stream. So, you know, like, share, subscribe, ding that bell, do all that stuff. It, it'll be so appreciated. Um, and thank you for being here. And, and if you're watch, if you're not watching this live, if you're watching on the replay, feel free to leave comments when it gets posted. And this will also be an audio portion uh, available wherever you get your podcasts. So, you know, this is in podcast form as well. So anyway, um, I don't know why. I, I did not plan to talk about Disney Plus shows, but uh, the Disney arc made me go that way. But we're here mainly to talk about X-Men. Um you probably can't see it here. Um, if I point that way, that's probably off screen. Yeah, that is off screen, but um, we're actually right. Uh, I, I'm not pointing well. <laughs> right here is a lot of my X Men books. You probably can't see it well. Um, I'm on StreamYard here, and this is only a 720p going out because this is the freed version. Why you see the Marauder Mark there on the, on the video. So, anyway, it's you're not seeing the best resolution here. Uh, for this episode, but, um, it's what it is, you know, um, so anyway, um, I was going to show, like, the trailer for X-Men and stuff like that, but that's copyright, and I don't want a copyright strike, um, I'd have to have enough traction on here to even get noticed, but, um, I'm, you know, doing things the way you're supposed to do them, so, you know, anyway, we're here to talk, um, about X-Men, and so I've got a lot of, of the books here, um, the actual comics and I have packed away um, a lot of the comics like I said in the 90s I was I was into everything that was going on there and um, especially Age of Apocalypse and everything leading up to that all through that and then afterwards and then of course the Onslaught saga which a lot of people didn't maybe not so many people look so fondly on I, is one of my favorite X-Men comic runs um i used to know all the writers and illustrators names and, you know that was the 90s that was a little bit ago that was what 2000s 2010 2000, that was like 30 years ago so you know kind of hard to remember 
all that going back, but um, there's a lot of that. Um, but I, on my bookcase over here, I do have a, a lot of those annuals. I've got everything like the Mutant Massacre. So I think that was in the 80s. Um, everything like that. Um, so, um, and I even have comics. I was even going into um, almost the 2000s, if not a little farther, with some of my comic collecting. It wasn't just X-Men, but X-Men was a, always a big focus. And here's where I start talking about my love of uh, X-Men, the animated series. Um, when I started watching it, yes, I knew about the X-Men and and all that, and seeing comics, and, you know, I was always in, growing up in Spider-Man, Batman, uh, Superman, and all that. Superman's still one of my favorites, um, that we haven't really, other than Henry Cavill, we really haven't gotten a proper Superman on screen. Henry Cavill was one of the best, and, um, even some of the ones that, like Brandon Routh, I thought was a good Superman. Not a great one, but Henry Cavill's probably the best we've had since Christopher Reeve. And uh, I don't know if I'll ever forgive DC for letting go of him, but rumor is, rumor and spoiler alert, that in a Deadpool versus Wolverine, we will see not as Superman, I mean, not as Cyclops, as I think he'd be perfectly cast for, but we'll see Henry Cavill coming over to MCU as a, from another... Uh, part of the multiverse from another reality or whatever coming over not as um, Cyclops but as Wolverine so he could be like a Wolverine variant which would be very interesting <laughs> and I I could see him doing that um, Henry Cavill is more the Superman physique he's more kind of even though it's kind of slim Digital came in. It's a, you know, they always called him, uh, Wolverine always called Cyclops Slim in the comics because he, even though he's a muscular dude, he was still kind of thin. And Henry Cavill's just a big muscular dude. So um, he may have to, you know, lose some weight or what, not lose weight, but, you know, be less, less muscly, I guess, if he's playing Cyclops. But, you know, um, it, Hugh Jackman, uh, it's hard to see anybody else in that role as Wolverine, to be honest with you. And, you know, just like Heath Ledger coming into the Joker and Michael Keaton being Batman, um, it just, you know, it's so funny that um, people always, uh, no matter what time it is, uh, what year, I mean, or whatever, the fandom is never happy. Oh, you know, Hugh Jackman oh, can't be Wolverine, he's too tall. He ends up being the quintessential. He did it for what fourteen years at least. Or if you had up him being in the Deadpool film, um, I don't know. It's even more years, I guess. But um, Hugh Jackman has become the quintessential Wolverine. He'll always be the best. Um, like Christopher Reeve will, and it's like of generations that come from Christopher Reeve will be the best Superman. Henry Cavill a very close second. Um, not to say I'm not open to seeing, um, the new Superman that we have. I have high hopes for that. I will go see it. Um, whatever James Gunn does with it. Um, I just like to see the characters being represented in the correct way that they were written. You know, yes, you can have changes in character arcs. That's fine. But don't change the essential components of a character like they did with Luke Skywalker in The Last Jedi. But I digress. So... Um, X-Men for me was always fun. It was part of, uh, Fox Kids uh, back then, and I think is what they called it. And, um, the X-Men series for me, it was all about Cyclops. I mean, I liked the other characters I did and all, but I wasn't a major Wolverine fan. Uh, of course, Wolverine right after th I think that came out, or especially in the comics was starting to become this big hit. And then, you know, then we get roll around to the 2000, to 2000 and we have X-Men and we have Hugh Jackman showing up on the scene. And by then it was, you know, Wolverine crazy. It was, everything was Wolverine and um, still to an extent is. And Scott never gets the um, kind of respect. They've pretty much done a shitty job of 
him through all the live action X Men. I mean, the different incarnations of him. But he's very much not the team leader, not the Boy Scout kind of person that he is. Which is why I think Henry Cavill would be great in the role as a leader and, you know, very decisive, very kind of gung ho, very hopeful, very, you know, whatever. Um, and, um, but we don't necessarily get that. And like Gene in X Men The Last Stand, which is probably what next to, um, Dark Phoenix, X Men Dark Phoenix is one of the least performing, well, not necessarily least performing, but least liked of all the X Men Fox films. Um, I was watching Days of Future Past the other day, and it still holds up. A long film, if you think about it, really, really interesting plot line, but it was just well executed, and it did a lot to repair the timeline that's not always been so great throughout Fox's X Men films. I did not hate Dark Phoenix, but at least they tried to do a Dark Phoenix even um, storyline, and I think they did a, a decent job. Not not a great job, but you know, still watchable. Uh, things I would change about it, but you know, it's what it is. And um, let's see. So over time, we've had so many different incarnations of X Men, and for me, like I said, Scott Cyclops was always the um, hero for me. He was like, I liked that he was the leader, and you know, and yes, he was, you know, even though later on Storm got to lead the team, which I think is also an awesome decision. I hope that we don't, they don't really, I hope that Disney does justice to the characters and we don't have to see, you know. This is the thing. We don't have to see the women overpowering the men necessarily. It doesn't have to be that way. And I don't mean necessarily their powers. I mean, that's the one one of the really good things about X-Men as a comic, as comics, I should say, because of several iterations of, of X-Men. And, and through the animated series, you always had strong females, and really some of the most powerful mutants are females, like especially Jean Grey slash Jean Grey or Phoenix. With or without Phoenix, she's still, you know, an Omega level mutant. Um, Storm, her command of the elements is, in, you know, makes her an incredibly powerful um, character and female character as well. And Rogue, of course, you know, and. Um, I guess they desexualized the drawings of Rogue and kind of under-emphasized her in X-Men 97. So if you you put the character up to what it what what she was and it's going to not mend so well, but it's different artists, different um, animators and their interpretation. So they've kind of updated her look and her look would probably have changed and even Rogue um, excuse me, even Storm has changed and Jean to an extent uh, and I understand that um, but um, one of my favorite storylines is the whole um, Cable Cyclops, Jean Grey and Goblin Queen, Madeline Pryor coming into it, the whole storyline, which we're going to get that for the first time in the animated series in X-Men 97, I should say. And so I'm interested to see how that will work out. We'll have the Executioner in X-Men 97. Um, there's someone, another character. Of course, we're going to have Mr. Sinister, which I love Mr. Sinister. Now, here's some nitpicky things. And for me, going through all the X-Men films... I appreciated the sound design, the sound effects specifically. And like X-Men the Animated Series, to me that sound of of Scott's using his um I almost said heat vision, um his optic blast. I love that the sound design on that. And for the all the different iterations we've had of like Wolverine and the X-Men, um animated series, which was also very good. Um, X-Men Evolution, which was good. Enjoyed both of those series. The, um, of course, their power sounded different. It was different animators, different, you know, 
people, creatives working on those projects. So it was, you know, different sound effects. But I, for me, it'll always, the sound of those optic blasts are from X-Men, the animated series. And they, in X-Men 97, sound a little bit different. And I wish, I mean, that's just a minimal thing, but it's, it's a little nitpicky thing. But, you know, when you're used to something and it's just a continuation. But I appreciate them bringing back as many voice actors as they could for X-Men 97. It seems like they've done almost everything right. And they were like 98, 99% there. And then you maybe had to go woke. And if they did that and wrecked the whole series, I will be highly upset by it. Um, I do look forward to, to watching. And I will all of X-Men 97 and hopefully I don't know if we, season 2 do we get a, is it X-Men 97 season 2 season 3 or is it X-Men 97 this is what I would do it's changing the show name I don't think you'd change it each year because then essentially it would be a different show so I guess you couldn't change the name but it would be cool if they did X-Men 97 X-Men 98 X-Men 99 and then you know then we could move into storylines that you know if we ever got up to like X-Men or X-24, honestly, which would be funny. Um, um, but if we ever got into that level of it, then it would be a different thing, you know, then we, you know, then you could get into issues that are today. And like the whole non-binary stuff and whatever else they want to throw in there to make this series seem updated. If we're taking it directly and calling it X-Men 97, we're not calling it X-Men 24, right, or 2024, it's X-Men 97, so it ought to reflect the technology of that time, it ought to reflect the values and whatever else of that time, the sensibilities of that time, if we're carrying the story forward, and you could see a progression of it, they could jump in the second season or third season, whatever they want to do, up to 2024, 2025, whatever it's going to be, you know, and I, I would probably be fine with that either way, you know, but um, the whole idea of um, of keeping the story correct to that time, people weren't talking about non-binary. We weren't, I don't know if those terms even existed, in, at least in the you know lexicon of what people said or whatever. I don't know if that even was a thing or even a thought process for it, for people then. I don't know. Um, I don't think it was. I mean, I don't remember hearing terms like that or, you know, and it's not criticizing anyone. It's not, you know, degrading it. Um, it's just like I was saying earlier, and I hope I made this point clear, you know, how we have the strong female characters. You can have and you can write strong female characters. I mean, I can think of so many characters like Ripley and Aliens and uh, Sigourney Weaver, you know, obviously in that, um, but you can have Sarah Connor. I'm, I'm a massive Terminator fan. Even the films that people don't like, I like. So, um, Lin, um, Linda Hamilton playing such a strong version, um, of Sarah Connor. And I think of the Sarah Connor Chronicles. I see some of those episodes come on and I know I own at least one of the seasons on maybe DVD or Blu-ray. Um, that was a great series. I mean, it went south after a couple of seasons, but I still enjoyed it and uh, watched all of it and I've uh, seen more than once a lot of the episodes, especially the first season, which I thought was amazing. And um, Lena Headley, I think is her name, who later became, was it Cersei in Game of Thrones? Um, she was a strong female character. But the men didn't have to be stupid. That's the, the problem with a lot of the woke writing now is that for the last several years it's been, you know, you know, it's the whole Captain Marvel kind of thing or Ray from the Disney films. Um, and no, it's not Ray Skywalker. It's Ray Palpatine. But um, <clears throat> the fact that you can have, they've been writing female characters and the men basically have to be dumbed down and stupid. And I know it seems something to call it either way, but good storytelling isn't about one character necessarily being better than another character, unless that's really the narrative of the story, you know. But you can still have strong female characters and you 
and you can still have strong male characters. That's more interesting anyway. And um, so, you know, that's what we're talking about. You know, having writing stuff the way it should be. Luke Skywalker would never give up what he was like he did in Last Jedi. Even though it's it's interesting, yes, it subverted the expectations, Ryan Johnson, but it still wasn't our Luke Skywalker. He was Jake Skywalker at best, a different character, according to Mark Hamill. And I agree with that. Um, I don't have a problem like with Morph being non-binary. I think if any place it makes sense, X-Men, you know, they fight against intolerance and bigotry and everything else, so it would fit well in the narrative of any X-Men series or whatever. I just... It was... Stuff like that was touched on in X-Men animated series, serious topics like that, but it, it, it was important to the stories, but it didn't drive the story. I mean, it did to an extent, but now that it's so... narratives are pushed on us and messages forced upon us, it's, you know... People are turning that off, and I, I want to see X-Men 97 and whatever iteration it continues to be to continue. I'm all for it, you know. Um, but when you revive legacy characters and, and and characters and you're continuing it, if this were a different series altogether and it had no tie to the animated series, X-Men 97, if that's the case, then that would be fine. If you call it X-Men 2024 or, some, or X-Men 24, I'd be fine with that, you know, because that's what's happening in this time and place, and it makes sense. And some people say it's making too much of it, but I don't think it is. I think, you know, you just have to be, because you have this pre-established of what's gone before, I feel you need to respect that, you know. Don't bring someone in to write a Star Wars film or Disney Plus show that doesn't know about Star Wars or doesn't care about Star Wars should have a love for the lore and what George Lucas created and then you can you know change it but within reason you know and so that's and that's what it is and um, I know a lot of people agree with me on that and and uh, I'm not the first to say that I won't be the last um will I watch X-Men 97 of course I will I'll be there front and center to watch it I'm, I'm like yes bring it on I want I want to see it I want it it to be done well I just don't want it to be done wrong <laughs> so you know let's let's respect what's come before and let's um, um, honor that so um, but yeah so I really enjoyed the in incarnation is that the word um, the, the version of X-Men the animated series and for me for a lot of years I've carried the torch on that hoping that it would come back not knowing that that was even ever a possibility that Disney could resurrect the series. Um, they did wonderfully that last season of Clone Wars and Dave Filoni bringing that back. Um, probably one of the best seasons in tying things together to uh, events of Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. So they did that wonderful. Um, a lot of shows have come back that way. And uh, so there's been hits and misses, and um, I don't want this to be a miss. I really hold this show, the animated series, um, very in very high esteem, and I should have... I'm looking around to see if I can even find, but I had copies on the DVDs, and I did buy, I think, the DVDs back in the day for X-Men the Animated Series, and I may have some stuff packed away that I, I don't have out. Um... Mm. Uh, and I can show you this. This is a <laughs> wow. This is old. Monday's just fall on Fox. This is from. This is. Uh, what year is this? Two thousand eight. This is a Sarah Connor Chronicles. Um, Terminator: The Sarah Connor Chronicles. Still got the sticker on it, but this is a complete first season. And look at this. It's DVD, unopened, still in its plastic, because I was collecting this, and I, but I may crack this open to watch it, even though it does come on uh, Heroes and Villains or something, I think is a, some network we get, and so this is on there, but it's 
especially the first season of this. Fantastic. But just showing you, you know, it's one of the things I collect. Um, I've got about every version of Terminator there is, especially Terminator 2. Uh, from the steel back to the extended cut and, and, and all that stuff like that. Um, I'm looking real quick here for X-Men, so see if I have the animated series. I think I do. So, haha, here we go. So to prove that, not that I have to prove anything, but here's my collection. And I have some on DVD somewhere else, but this is my X-Men animated series collection here. And uh, there's a lot of different, excuse me, a lot of different versions. Um, interesting, all the different ones that they have. Um, I don't know where to start. I don't know in what particular order. Here is uh, 77 episodes. Um, this is in full screen. When, when is this? This is a DVD video of it. Oops. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't. I do not know. I do not know where I got this. <laughs> but that's supposedly all of them. Um, that's kind of cool. Um, the Legend of Wolverine. This one isn't really. It does look like the animated series. Um, I feel like this was part of some Pizza Hut thing. I'm not sure. I don't know why or something. I don't remember. Um, but that's cool. Let's see. That's there. That's there. Um, then I have this as well. This is, this is some of the episodes, but uh, oops. Sorry about that the sound. That's some more of the uh, animated series there. For some reason, I have two copies of that. I don't know why. Hmm, that's weird. Then we have this one, X-Men The Phoenix Saga, which is where they, they put about three or four episodes in there. Um, when is this? This is from 2000, originally from 1994. So that's interesting. Um, this is like Sanctuaries Part 1 and 2, Weapon X, Lies, and Videotape, and then Proteus is Part 1 and Part 2. Episodes of the animated series we have there. Um, what else? This one I never even opened. The Marvel DVD comic collection. First time on two-disc DVD. This is volume two featuring the Phoenix Saga of X-Men. This has um, everything from Red Dawn, Repo Man, Externally Yours. Externally Yours was where we had uh, an Eternal on there and they gave a power to the Thieve Guilds and the whole Gambit episode. It was a good one, Time Fugitives, which part one and part two with Bishop, and which is one of my favorites. Rogue's Tale, Beauty and the Beast, uh, one about Beast, Mojo Vision. We had Reunions one and two, Out of the Past, the whole Phoenix Saga five part. So that was a good one. And a lot of these, like I said, are unopened. This is, this is volume two, this is volume three. Of that, uh, the Marvel DVD comic book collection, and uh, this is the whole Dark Phoenix, uh, Juggernaut Returns, uh, One Man's Worth, which is about Xavier, you know, Nimrod, and then went back and killed him. It was very interesting. It's a lot of good things. Um, here's volume four. Apparently, I bought all of these, um, so I'm hardcore. This has um. A lot of them. Uh, Sanctuary Beyond Good and Evil, Proteus. That's volume four of that. Here's volume five. So they were a little out of out of sync there. This is where Wolverine goes back and fights alongside um, Captain 
America, which is pretty cool. That's Old Soldiers, starring Captain America, was on there. The Phalanx Covenant, parts one and part two, was on here. Long Shots episodes on here. Stormfront. Um, this had Graduation Day. And this came out. Graduation Day was the last episode of the series. And um, let's see. Um, when was this put out? 2010 is when this came out. So that's kind of cool. This was kind of the end of the series. And uh, oops, here's volume one I missed in the beginning. This has Night of the Sentinels, two parter, Inner Magneto, Taylor Reunion's Captain Heart, Cold Vengeance. Slave Island, The Unstoppable Juggernaut, The Cure, Come the Apocalypse. These are some of the that first season. They were hitting it out of the park. Days of Future Past, Part 1 and 2, one of my favorites as well. The Final Decision, then we have Till Death Do Us, Parts 1 and 2. That's when Sinister, Gene, and him were trying to get married, and Gene and Scott, and then Sinister was doing what he does. And uh, this is um, this one I opened, apparently. So I definitely watched this one to death. I was like, I need to watch this. So this is back in the day. And it was like, and this is when Blu-rays were, were out, were a thing. But this was only available on DVD at the time. And I may have a Blu-ray version of this, of the X-Men series. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't, I honestly, excuse me. Um, I may have a version, as I was saying, I may have a version of this on Blu-ray of X-Men, but I, I don't think I do. But I might. Um, sorry. Let's see. One, two, three, four. That's five. Oh, there's points. Yeah. So all of those. So that's kind of cool. Um, and here's here's some separate episodes because they did put out some separate episodes. This is going back a little bit. This one's in 2001. This is um, Reunions Part 1 and 2 and Out of the Past 1 and 2 and No Mutant is an Island. So that was uh, back here somewhere. Um, do, 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 do. So, anyway, that's that. Um, oh, and, and I have one other X Men thing. I have, have other stuff. And this is actually on Blu ray, and I did open this. The three disc set featuring all 26 episodes. I think we only had one episode, and back then you'd get 20 something episodes for a season. This was put out. This is on actual Blu ray. This is Wolverine and the X Men. Essentially, Wolverine was the leader of the team then. Hence, you can see how popular Wolverine was. Um, with the light, I'm trying to see what the date on this is. This says 2008 is when this came out. Wow. And so this version might be actually 2010. So the series may have been out in 08. So uh, Wolverine and the X-Men, this is the complete series on Blu-ray. Definitely worth having, especially if you're an X-Men fan. You definitely want that in your collection. And so, um, I'm trying to put these in order, so give me just a second. Um, alrighty, so they're not any perfect order, but so that's kind of what I got there, so. Um, I'll just put that there for a second this is while we talk, but anyway, so obviously I've been an X-Men fan, and especially the animated series um let me know in the comments um your thoughts on some of the animated series and as we go along i i, I wish i could do watch parties but the episodes are going to be debuting at 3 a.m and eastern time or midnight specific time so i was hoping we get like a 9 p.m the night before kind of thing like on the 19th or the 20th or whatever it was but we're not getting that for Marvel, so unfortunately, like I think they did with Ahsoka. Um, so we're going to get them just the standard release time. So um, it may be the next day. It may be that Thursday with school and everything else going on. It may be difficult. I'm definitely not doing any live streams at 3 a.m. in the morning. I should be asleep by then or getting ready to go to school. So... That being said, you know, we will I will try to review the X-Men 97 and give you my thoughts. And I would love to discuss that on the podcast with anybody who wants to come on the podcast as a guest. Um, or, you know, just wants to talk through the live chats or, or the comments. 
please leave your comments and um, on Geek Home World, and we'll definitely you know discuss it all. But um, I'm super psyched for X Men '97, and I really hope it lives up and to and hopefully for once to be nice to exceed my expectations on something especially when Disney's the parent company of all this. Um, obviously, obviously, um, the billion-dollar film this year, if there's going to be any, it's going to be, if done right, Deadpool versus Wolverine. Oh, my gosh, it's that's going to be so good. I don't know how many times I'm going to see that film, but it's going to be a lot. And uh, I'm sorry, that's not coming out this year. Isn't that next year? I'm upset. Well, you know, when it comes out. <laughs> I don't know. What is the... I've got to see what the release... I've got to look that up. I'm actually going to do that. Because um, I, I feel like it's changed. Um, release date of Deadpool versus Wolverine. Wolverine. Oh, it, it is this year. Okay, I wasn't wrong. Uh, the third Deadpool film will premiere in theaters July 26, 2024. And uh, I thought for some reason it was pushed back to 2025. Um, well, that makes me extremely happy. <laughs> I, I I will say that I am over the moon excited about that. So um, that is something I'm looking forward to it. Sorry, I was looking at my Microsoft points there. That's what that funny look was. They've changed. Um, but yeah, so um, I'm very excited for um, the possibilities of that. I think they're going to do a fantastic job, and I hope so. And um, I talked earlier about some of my favorite characters. Obviously, Scott, Cyclops. But... Um, uh, I like Nightcrawler. I like Beast. I like, there, there were so many different episodes that brought out so many different characters, and you had different story arcs going. So it was some really good writing for for a kids animated show back in the nineties. X Men, the animated series, I think was ahead of its time, and it was a lot more really adult than it was for kids. And um, maybe that's why I liked it more. Um, so I would have been in my twenties. Yikes. Um, when that was on, yeah, 92 to 96. I would have been 22 to 26 when that came out. And I saw, saw them all. I probably was still recording stuff, probably on DVD by then, but it probably some still some on VHS. I wouldn't be surprised. I don't remember when DVDs became a thing, especially if you could record, you know, because you record off a of TV when they came on. But back then, stuff really wasn't in syndication as much. You know, you couldn't, you didn't have streaming services. People today don't know how lucky they are that you can just punch something up in seconds when you couldn't do that <laughs> back in the day we had it hard but that's how it was um so um with all that said and done those are kind of my thoughts on on um x-men 97 there's probably more to talk about um this could have been a funner episode if I had Digital Cave in here where we're going to be pulling out our... Which I kind of did here, pulling out our different DVDs and stuff. And I was hoping he would have action figures from the time and we could talk about it and he could reference you to some of his unboxings that he's done, uh, especially on X-Men stuff. And uh, maybe for another time we'll, we'll be able to get that schedule, get that going. But um, I do appreciate everybody being here, everybody that bothered to show up for, for, for this. And... Um, and all that so it's, it's really this has been fun it's been a fun episode so um i'm not going to keep you guys much longer but thank you everyone um let me know in the comments here this is going to go up on podcasts so wherever you listen to your podcast or 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 hopefully on a youtube channel you'll go and um to geek home world and you'll subscribe um not to just this episode 169 live stream to me my x-men but you'll subscribe to Geek Home World at youtube.com or on YouTube at Geek Home World 4248. That's at Geek Home World 4248. And hopefully soon we'll have more than 51 
uh, subs to the channel here. When we hit 100, I can officially change the name of the channel to Geek Home World, and it'll just be much easier. But you can still search for Geek Home World. You go on YouTube. You're all savvy enough to figure it out. You can get there. Trust me. So um, I hope everybody will go there and leave your comments. And um, also Geek Home World on, on X, formerly known as Twitter. And uh, we're on there. Uh, we do have a Facebook page, Geek Home World and Geek Home World Gaming, which I haven't done anything with that because I was trying to get into gaming for a while. But I may go back and do some gaming, get back into it a little bit. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, a lot of time is uh, family and school and work and stuff like that. So uh, a lot of things are, keep me busy. I don't have the time I had used to have. Um, certainly not the kind of time we had during the pandemic. Um, but that's something else. Anyway, so... Thank you, everybody, who's listened, and I've got to uh, end this now, or I'll just keep yapping away, but <laughs> anyway, thank you for joining us here on the live stream, and uh, please uh, like, share, subscribe, ding that bell, do all that stuff on uh, Geek Home World, and uh, let us know, and um, this has been uh, Geek Home World episode 169, live stream, to me, my x -Men. And uh, thank you, everybody. And now I'll roll the outro here. And uh, thanks for being a part of the Geek Home World. And we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to another exciting episode of the Geek Home World podcast with your host, Ed, a.k.a. The Savage Tech Man. Remember to follow us on X, Instagram, Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for being a part of the Geek Homeworld.